So this is not my first time. I've had the honor of being here many times. Uh, and I think uh, Thierry de Montréal, Son, uh, Son Nîmes, uh, and others, your, your whole team does an extraordinary job. I think the World Policy Conference is truly unique. Some of the best conversations that I've had on these kinds of issues have been here. And in part uh, because of the way it's organized, in part because of the size, uh, and in part because Thierry's leadership uh, and willing to go directly to the heart of the most important issues. So it's an honor to be here again. I think uh, we were talking about the intersection between uh, technology, society and democracy specifically on this panel. Um, one of the concerns is that citizens participating in a democracy simply don't understand how technology has become the connective tissue uh, between citizens, between citizens and their institutions. So uh, machines, apps, data is everywhere uh, and indeed our freedom of thought is even algorithmically infiltrated to some extent. We're being subjected to social media, to advertising that's algorithmically uh, controlled and citizens don't understand this. So it becomes very hard for citizens to understand how they should behave, how they should hold their leaders to account, uh, and sometimes indeed how they should vote, but also where risk is so, um, and where opportunity is. You know, is artificial intelligence the next great diagnostic tool for medicine? Uh, is artificial intelligence going to mean that citizens don't have any privacy anymore? So I think one of the fundamental challenges is to make sure that citizens can catch up uh, with the technology and some fundamental understanding so that we all can develop a point of view on the ethics matters uh, and not have the ethics determined by the large corporates or even by governments. I think the fundamental point is that technology doesn't erase age-old ills. It doesn't erase hate speech or sex trafficking or bullying. Uh, in fact, it amplifies it. And so one of the things we're seeing today is an epidemic of teen, teen suicides linked to bullying on social media. Why? Because there doesn't seem to be anywhere to escape once something is out there on the internet. Nor is there any way to know just how far some of the content that is bullying has gone. Who's seen it? It's very different from, for example, being bullied in a playground where one can leave or change schools. Um, and similarly, we're seeing uh, all manner of infiltration uh, through advertising, through social media, of uh, everyone's heard about fake news, uh, but all manner of distortion. And it's very hard to figure out what is actually the truth, uh, in part because of the sheer volume of the information that we have, but again, in part because we don't understand how the algorithms are working that are sorting what comes to us.